Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. It's your boy John. How's everybody doing today? I'm good. I'm just waking up, you know, starting another day. It's another beautiful day in Southern California. It's going to be hot. It's been a heat wave out here lately. Um, I'm hoping it continues to get hot because I'm one of those kind of guys that love the summer. I love the summer months. I live for the summer. And it's a nice time of year, even though we don't have Lakers basketball. But that's what I want to talk about today. Because in the next couple of weeks, things are going to get interesting. The draft is on Thursday. And as you all know, the Lakers have the number two pick in this year's NBA draft. Um, you know, it's going to be an interesting offseason to see if the Lakers, you know, somehow sign Dwayne Wade. Uh, to see what kind of moves this team makes, you know, because they need some drastic, they need to make some drastic changes. And I think the Lakers know that. And I think the Lakers are saying right now what they're what they're telling us is that they want to win now. They want to win now. They want to take Kobe out on top because Kobe announced, uh, you know, he hasn't really announced it, but the way he's hinting is that he's going to retire at the end of the 2015-2016 season. So I think the Buzz family is aware of that, and they want to put talent around him immediately. They want to make these moves right away so they can get a winning product on the court and hopefully take him out on top. That's the only reason why a DeMarcus Cousins trade makes sense right now because that's the, that's, that's the only way it makes sense. That's the, that's, that's the only way I see it happening is because of Kobe Bryant and because he wants to go out with a six ring. So you got to get players now and you can't look into the future. As for me, I'm more concerned about the Lakers' future. I'm more concerned about getting younger. I'm looking at the post-Kobe era because once Kobe retires, who do we have? Who's our superstar? I understand we have Jordan Clarkson, okay? And he's an up-and-coming, emerging star in this league. You know, he had an impressive rookie season. He he was remarkable. You know, he, he, he showed that he's capable of developing as a player and, and blossoming into a, a, a superstar. But it's going to take time. It's not an overnight process. And the Lakers all of a sudden are, are being mentioned as the team trying to trade for DeMarcus Cousins, the Kings' seven-foot center. Uh, you know, now, I watched a lot of him at Kentucky. As you guys know, I'm a Kentucky Wildcat fan as well, in college hoops. So I've seen this guy play. And, you know, when he first came into the league, he was kind of immature. You know, he let his emotions get the best of him. Now he's grown up a lot as a player. He, he's um, he's one of the best centers in the league. He's an all-star center, um, you know. And the Lakers have emerged as one of the determined trade suitors for the All-Star Center, and they are, are, are aggressively pursuing, um, but you would have to surrender the number two pick. That's the only way I see you getting this guy. But Sacramento Kings' Vladi Divac already said that he's not trading his superstar player. He is not trading his center. Um, you can't believe everything a general manager or a team executive tell you. Um, Sometimes that's to, you know, uh, keep the media out of out of your out of your house, you know, to keep the media um, you know, behind that wall so everything can stay confidential on what the team is doing and so it won't, you know, draw a distraction. Okay. But uh the only way I see this trade going down if you trade the number two overall pick, and the Lakers will be stupid to do that. If they do that, if they trade this number two pick, I'm going to be very upset. I'm going to disown this team, and I'm going to rant. I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, make a video where I'm ranting, where I'm literally upset that the Lakers traded the number two pick. That's just dumb. That's just stupid. It don't even make sense when you could get younger and you could get better. That's the Lakers' problem right there. They need to get younger, and they need a point guard. They, you know, I understand we have developed a legacy, and I understand the Bus family have um, always, you know, 
been infatuated with big men, okay? Shaquille O'Neal, you know, uh, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, um, big, big, big time seven foot centers, and the Lakers when they want a big man, they will go out and shop the market and get him, and they will land him. You see, we got the White Howard, but of course he was a little sissy, and you know he he couldn't handle the pressure here in L.A., so he bailed out on us. But anyway, um, you know, in these trade sweepstakes that's going on right now, the Lakers got to surrender. Maybe big man Julius Randle. Um, maybe Jordan Clarkson, our up-and-coming star, uh, and, and the number two pick. And you have a chance to get a guy like Jaleel Okafor from Duke, a, a, a seven-foot center who uh, won a national championship this year with Duke. Um, you have a chance to get uh, D'Angelo Russell, who says and who's so certain that he's the best point guard in this year's draft, if not the best draft prospect out there on the boards. Um, you you know, you have um, Carl Anthony Towns, who's already, you know, as you already know, uh, Minnesota has made it clear that they will take him with the number one overall pick on th in Thursday night's NBA draft. But you have a list of names out there that the Lakers could pursue and that they could draft and that they could select with the number two pick. But, I mean, if you trade this pick, um... You know, people are going to be very, very critical of the Bus family if they trade this pick. And I'm going to be one of them. I'm not going to be too happy with it. I'm going to be very unhappy. And I'm going to be disappointed. And then I'm going to say this team is, is going backwards. You know, and if anything, you want to move forward. You don't want to go backwards. So if you make a trade for a proven center, you know, it, it's a gamble. It's a gamble because... How you know DeMarcus Cousins is going to blend in well in Los Angeles, okay? And, and, and just like you get that number two pick, how you know he's not going to be a bust? You know, those are the, it's just life's a gamble. Life is, is about taking risk, you know, especially when you're a team executive or a general manager or a team owner trying to make the right pick or trying to trade for the right pieces so it hopes to win a championship. And, you know, that's what the Lakers are doing here. I, I, I couldn't be the Bus family right about now. But I could give my best advice to the Bus family and say that they need to, to select a point guard with the number two pick. And, and people were telling me, you know, well, you can always uh, get a point guard. You, you know, uh, point guards are easy to come. Uh, uh, big men are, are not. You know, you, you got to, with that number two pick, you got to take a big man. You got to take a seven-foot center. I, I, I kind of disagree. I think whatever you need on your team, whatever whatever you need to address, that's what you should, that's what you should focus on bringing in to help your team, you know, uh, win. That's a necessity. A, a point guard for the Lakers right now is a necessity. So you got to address the backcourt. That's the issue with the Lakers right now. And, and why not draft D'Angelo Russell? I mean, I watched this guy in, in, I, I watched this guy in, in college at Ohio State. He has great vision. He can run the floor. He's very confident. He's poised. He can spread the floor. He can light it up from three-point range. He can drive to the basket and finish. He can, you know, he's very quick. He um, makes smart decisions with the basketball. He has all the intangibles of, of, uh, that a point guard needs. And I think he's the right fit for the Los Angeles Lakers. And I think, um, you know, Kobe could be like a mentor for him and, and, and can help him develop into the next big s superstar in L.A. Maybe I'm talking too fast, but I think this guy is capable of being a superstar, and I think he has great potential. So I would go with D'Angelo Russell with the number two pick from Ohio State. Um, just a, just an electrifying uh, a guard. You know, he's a shooting guard, but I know you could switch him at point, um, you know. But I, I, think, I think that's who the Lakers should draft, and I hope that's who they select with the number two pick in this year's NBA draft. Now, if they select Okafor, I won't be mad, you know, because he is a big man, and he's a seven-foot center, and he was arguably the best center 
in all of college basketball, if not the best player in college basketball last season. So that won't, I mean, it won't be much of a problem to me if the Lakers, um, you know, uh, were to draft him with the number two pick overall. So we'll see. It's going to be interesting. Anyways, um, you guys have a wonderful day. Um, I'll be back in the video as, uh, maybe tomorrow, maybe the next day, maybe a couple days from now. But you'll see my face again. Uh, be sure to check out my videos in the future. Uh, you guys have a wonderful day. I am out.